on our way. So uh, we are uh, just thrilled really to have you guys here this afternoon to talk about this important topic of mental health. I almost wore my t-shirt. I actually have a t-shirt that a friend got me that says, I'm fine, it's fine, everything's fine. I said it so much during the pandemic that a friend of mine actually got me a t-shirt, almost wore it, but didn't want you guys to think it was weird. So I didn't wear it, but it is, um, it's okay you know, to have the t-shirt and, and to feel that way because I think we all feel that way. It's, it's something that I think anyone feels during the holidays anyway, but now on the heels of this pandemic and still you know, with the uncertainty of the pandemic, it's too much, it's too much. So um, we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about it through the lens of 211. So raise your hand if you've heard uh, of 211 before, if you know what it is. Okay, so just to sort of recap and, and to kind of inform people who may not have, have heard of it, or who you've heard of it, but you're not really sure what it is. 211 is our information and referral crisis line. It is a 24-7 phone line staffed by Heart of Florida United Way call specialists uh, with one goal, and that's to help Central Floridians connect with existing resources in the community. Uh, so we make the connections, we're the matchmakers, if you will, uh, between the issue, the problem, the hurt, the worry, the concern, and the solution. We're the one in the middle that makes those connections 24-7 um, every day of the year. Emerging Leaders is bringing this conversation to life today and to share a little bit uh, about Emerging Leaders, which is this great new group here we have at Florida United Way. I'd like to welcome the amazing America Ammerman, Director of Key Donor Segments and our staff liaison for Emerging Leaders to tell us a little bit more about it, America. Thank you, Nancy. I love that intro. And thank you everyone for being here today. And I would love to share information about Emerging Leaders. You know, this is a group that we just launched last month and it really aims to connect you know, those early to mid career professionals who are very passionate about the community and want to make an impact. And we are going to provide, you know, a variety of opportunities for this when it comes to either volunteering, investing micro grants, you know, and really learning about critical social issues, just like today with mental health and also, you know, some fun networking and happy hour opportunities. And we have a bunch planned for 2022 that are also action oriented and impact driven. And we would love to have you guys be a part of this. In the chat, there will be a link that you guys can subscribe to our email and get the communications for future events, as well as I'll put in the chat my information. If you guys have any questions, want to get involved, or are looking for any leadership roles, you know, we will have a committee that drives the work that this group will do in the community. And, you know, if you have anyone that you think would just fit emerging leaders, please share this to your network. You know, we love to grow this and really, you know, make that community impact uh, that, you know, Heart of Florida Way, Heart of Florida United Way does, as well as, you know, uh, us young professionals. And then I also want to share that at the end of the presentation, we have partnered with Get Up and Go Kayaking, and we will be raffling off a voucher for two uh, that you can enjoy, you know, work on that mental health at Rainbow Springs. And so that's going to be, you know, a fun adventure uh, for those who win it. So please, if you have any questions, reach out. I'm happy to help. And thank you for being here. Uh, back to you, Nancy. All right. Thanks, Merica. And on that note, we also have another giveaway that we're going to do in just a moment. And uh, as we as we prepare for that, I wanted to uh, give you guys a little tip here. If you can grab your phones, I don't know if you're watching us on your computer and you can have your cell phone. Can you please go to kahoot.it? So K-A-H-O-O-T, kahoot.it, because we're going to play a little game with you guys and we're going to have some, some fun with it. That's coming up. There's that, there's that website there. Uh, we're going to have a little fun with you in just a moment. But first, um, I know we just had a few more people join us. Uh, before we do um, the Kahoot game, um, let's do some icebreaker questions. So if you're just joining us, I talked about in the beginning how I, I have this t-shirt that says, it's okay, it's fine, everything's fine, I'm fine, everything's fine. I'm not fine, I'm not okay. And I'm, I'm really open to say that. Um, you know, we just through, went through a pandemic. Um, I uh, fought breast cancer this year and won. And it was, uh, you know, obviously a very unexpected twist in my life. Um, but um, yeah, it brought a lot of challenges. And here we are, you know, at the holidays, I'm starting a new, who starts a new job during the holidays anyway, this girl. So that was crazy. So there's, you know, it's okay. It's okay to lay out you know, all the reasons that maybe you're just feeling a little off this holiday season. So if anybody wants to share 
now's the time. I kicked it off. <laughs> so if anyone wants to just talk about maybe how the holidays are feeling a little different this year, does anybody want to share anything as we're getting started here? So I promise it's a safe space. <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> no judgment zone. Um, mute yourself, raise your hand. You can use the chat if you'd like. Um, I guess this means everyone's doing perfectly fine. Is it just me? Sandra, I see you shaking your head. How are, how are you handling the holidays this year? You doing okay? <laughs> it's a little different. I'm, uh, this, since the pandemic and working from home, there's been so many things that I've confronted that I've never confronted before. Just mm -hmm. doing my work itself um, is different, but also a lot of personal loss. I've lost seven people since May of last year. Oh my gosh. So I've never had to deal with that kind of stuff. So it's been a rough one, but I'm not afraid to say it because that's the only way I'm going to get through it. That's right. Sandra, thank you for sharing that. And, and you know, our condolences to you. That's, that's tough, but you know, we appreciate you sharing and, and yeah, you're right. You're not alone. I mean, everyone's been through a lot this year and a lot of hardship and many people in our community have faced a, a lot of loss. Um, Laura, I'm going to put you on the spot. How are you doing? If anyone's just joining us, I talked up in the beginning, Laura was actually my producer at WFTV channel nine. Um, and I miss you, girl. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, I think uh, going into the holiday, you know, overall good, but this is the first time my entire family is getting together since, you know, everything started and everyone has some different opinions and oof, I have no idea how this is going to go. <laughs> that's going to be my number one concern. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's a good point, right? We're all seeing family members for the first time, maybe in a long time. Does anybody else have big family gatherings that you're all looking forward to or not looking forward to? It's okay to say that too, if you're not looking forward to it. <laughs> Hi, uh, yeah, so I think I'm at that age now where my partner and I are the ones who are going to be hosting Thanksgiving oh. or Thanksgiving, see, I'm a mess, Christmas dinner at our house. So it's just one of those things that brings a whole new level of stress to the holidays for me. So wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for, for sharing a little bit. And, you know, there's going to be plenty of opportunities here to engage with each other if you feel more comfortable as we're getting, you know, later in the in the program. Didn't mean to put you guys on the spot, but I think it's important. You know what I mean? That we just open up and share. That's what this platform is for. That's what these little events are for. And hopefully soon we can do them in person again. That would be nice. Um, so let's uh, let's get going and uh, play this little game and see who wants to win a Starbucks gift card. Who could use a little Starbucks right now? All right. Let's do it. So we wanted to kind of quiz you to see, you know, what you know about the Heart of Florida United Way. This is going to be a quick, fun little game. So if you did go to Kahoot.com and you put in that code, there's that pin right there. It's 658-9176. So if you can go to Kahoot. Uh, dot it, actually, I should say it's Kahoot. Dot it on your phone uh, real quick and um, put in that code and we're going to play. We're going to give everybody a second to get on there. And then we're gonna get started. I think that's it. You guys good to get started here? That code 6589176. All right, all right, let's get started here and um, play this quick little game to get us going and, and win a Starbucks gift card. Mental health for the holidays with a little snowman starts in two. Laurel, you should be counting me down, what you do. All right, here we go. Which is not a Heart of Florida United Way impact area? Not. So you see the options there. So click on the one that is not an impact area for Heart of Florida United Way. All right. There we go. The answer is wellness. So we'll see how we did on that first round. Uh, and we have a leader there. All right. There we go. That's where we stand. Starbucks gift card. Let's go to our next question. True or false? We cover Orange, Osceola, and Seminole County. Heart of Florida United Way covers Orange, Osceola, and Seminole County. That's an easy one. <laughs> All right, we're counting down. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Um, awesome. Everybody got it right. That's true. Those are the three counties we cover. So let's see where we stand. All right, Giddy's still in the lead. Awesome. All right, let's go to our next question. What program is presenting to you today? We hope you were listening. We have a lot of programs at Heart of Florida United Way. 
Uh, so which one is presenting to you today? Is it Mission United, Ryan White, Destination Graduation, or 211? This will be the test to see if anybody was listening to me. <laughs> All right. And yeah, 211. That's right. Awesome. And um, all right, Kitty's still in the lead. Very cool. All right, let's go to our next question. We have two, three left. Which month did 211 receive the highest amount of crisis and suicide contacts in 2020? So we did have a month where we saw a spike. So can you guess which month that was in 2020? There's your options there on the screen. All right, let's see the answer was, or is, the answer is October. Oh, only one person got that right, October. That was the month with our highest calls. Oh, day just moved up, but we still have Gideon lead. All right, let's go to our next one, true or false. 211 covers 14 counties in Florida and 42 counties in Tennessee. Is that true or false? So this is a little question so you can get to know kind of our coverage area and our reach. Okay, let's see. And that is true. Yep, true. 12 of you got it right. Very cool. All right, here it is. There's our, yep, getting still in the lead, but it's getting close. <laughs> All right, this is our last question. How many crisis and suicide contacts did 211 receive in October of 2021? And we'll be, we're going to be digging a little deeper into this um, topic here shortly in uh, our conversation, but there's, there's your options um, for the answers. All right. And the answer is, here it is, 1,665. So have to think about, that's a high number. So um, there's our, our little recap of our our little quiz and giddy's the winner of the Starbucks gift card. So congratulations. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Wait, did I just mess that up again? Who's the winner here? Giddy came in third. Lizzie's the winner. There it is. Giddy, I owe you a Starbucks gift card. I owe you a Starbucks gift card. I thought because your name came up first that you won. Lizzie is actually the winner with five out of six. I did that during the rehearsal too. I thought the first name that popped up was the winner. All right, so there we go. Uh, you're going to be getting a, uh, a message there from um, America, I think, with some information um, for the Starbucks gift card. So congratulations. That was just a fun little thing we wanted to run through to kind of give you um, some information on, on what 211 does. But now uh, we're really going to um, dig a little deeper into exactly what we do and how we do it and, and, and how it looks now, right, in these, in these very different times that we're living in. I want to introduce Catherine Rea right now to you guys. Um, who is the Vice President of 211 Strategic Impact and Community Engagement for Heart of Florida United Way. Um, Catherine, thank you um, for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, before we jump into this conversation with you, though, um, we do have a little video that we want to share with you guys about 211. So let's watch that now. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. When you don't know where to turn, let 211 be your guiding light. Two one one, how can I help you? Our guides are ready to connect you with the help you need. with food, health care, mental health, and other resources. Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211. Get connected. Get help. All right, so that little video gave you a glimpse, but as I said, we did want to bring in uh, Catherine Rea, who's our vice president for 211, to really dig a little deeper into exactly, um, you know, what these 211 specialists do and, and what they go through. And uh, Catherine, you know, what a, what a job, right, for these specialists who are truly 
um, on the front lines of, of what our community went through during the pandemic and, uh, and what they're going through now heading into the holidays. So can you give us a little snapshot, um, first of all, about what these 201 specialists do, who they are? I mean, they're moms and dads and people who are going through all these things as well, right? Oh, absolutely, Nancy, and thank you for inviting me in today. Happy to be here. Um, yes, um, the last almost two years has been um, very challenging, but actually it's presented some wonderful opportunities. Um, as you know, um, as you stated, 211 is a program of the Heart of Florida United Way, and we do cover 14 counties in Florida and 42 in Tennessee. So we are 24-7, 365. And um, as we talked about, you know, back in March of 2020, um, we moved over the course of a three-day weekend, we moved all of our contact center, our 211 specialist and team to remote settings from the safety of their homes. And we maintain, never lost 24-7 services. So that in itself was quite an accomplishment. And it presented a lot of challenges, technology issues, connectivity, you know, um, but the team is just amazing and wonderful. And here we are um, doing, I think, the good work and better than ever. Um, almost two years later, I really have to give kudos to our 211 team and thank them. And Catherine, give us a, a kind of a deeper glimpse into exactly um, how these specialists help, how the Heart of Florida United Way, you know, comes in at that moment, like I said, to make the connection. Um, because it's hard for people in crisis to, to find the right resource. And it's very easy, right, to get sort of lost in, the, um, in that search. Oh, absolutely. Um, our team is, <clears throat> well, I like to start out by saying we're part of a national network of 211s. There's over 242 11s that cover the nation, about 96%. And in Florida, we have 12 2 11s that work very closely to provide 100% coverage for the state. So we are um, not only helping um, over 5.5 million people get connected, our specialists are extensively trained not only in providing information and referral. And I, I really always stress, Nancy, that it, we connect them with available resources. Our um, Diane is on, Diane Harvey is our resources manager and texting manager. And her and her team um, do an amazing job of maintaining and updating our resource database daily, sometimes hourly. Um, and we couldn't do what we do without them because we have to send people to available resources that they need help with. So they are trained extensively in information referral, um, in crisis intervention and in support, as well as we are an accredited um, and contract provider for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So we handle those calls as well. So very trained um, professionals, um, and I couldn't say enough about them. Awesome. Oh, Catherine, well, you're a great person to ask then about, you know, because of your experience and what you see and hear every day. Um, you know, just some practical tips on maintaining our mental health for the holidays. Let's dig into that a little bit, because I think, you know, we the theme sort of throughout this little conversation has been that it's okay to not be okay right now. And that no one is, and I think if they say they are, they're lying. I'm sorry, just my opinion throwing that out there. I'm fine. My opinion now you're, fine. The news. <laughs> you're fine. You're <laughs> so, fine. You're fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Everything's I love fine. that. So yeah, I'm gonna wear my t-shirt next time. Now that we've all become friends and we're established, next time I'm gonna wear my I'm fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. T-shirt. Um, so let's talk about those tips, Catherine. If you could kind of run us through um and also just identifying signs that someone might actually need, you know, more help, you know, right? Than just beyond a chat or a conversation or a text message? How do you know when it's time to really maybe reach out on someone's behalf in a more you know, serious, impactful way? Thank you. Um, yes, I think it's very important during the holidays as well as all year round, especially um, given the last almost two years, what everyone has been going through. Um, I think the number one tip I could give is just um, self-care. 
take care of yourselves, you know, take time, reach out to friends, family, loved ones. Um, also to talk. Um, I think we live in a digital world where it's, um, some people have been very isolated during the pandemic. And if you're able to and feel safe, reach out, uh, meet with somebody, talk, hug. <laughs> Hugs are always good. Um, and I think also unplug. You just have to unplug sometimes. I know I do. Um, you get that, what is it? The digital video fatigue sometimes. And um, it's, it's really good to do that. And I know for me, and this is personally my, my respite is walking. I have a dog and you can't walk without a dog because I can't go out the door without her. But this time of year, the weather is beautiful. And it's just so nice, even if it's just 20 minutes to go out outside, take a walk. I also think it's just important to take time for things you enjoy, because if you're not well, the people that depend on you won't be well. So even as leaders, as um, mothers, fathers, you know, siblings, um, it's important to, that you are well. Um, and I think also um, that's what 211 is here for. We're not only an information and referral crisis line, we're also a support line. Many people, especially in the pandemic, um, not only experienced mental health crisis, largely um, were due to financial crisis. So if we can get you or anyone that you know connected to those financial resources available, the housing, shelter, rental assistance, food, utility assistance, um, counseling services, mm -hmm. that hopefully will relieve some of the, the, the mental health crisis they're experiencing. A um, couple of things to follow up on your comments. I, I absolutely am a huge proponent of dogs sol uh, solving all of our mental health issues. I am, if you're a dog person, it's okay if you're a cat person too. It's okay because cats can do the same thing. But dogs, I'm telling you, I actually refer to my dog as my emotional support animal openly. I'm at the park and I'm like, this is my, he's not, he's not trained. He doesn't have a vest. I may get him one, but um, I do believe that dogs are a huge, a huge uh, oh. assistance. And Lena's workstation's right under my desk. And she's oh, giving yes. Me Very important. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I think for the next event, we include our dogs. We have them all like kind of next to us and we all have to share and show a picture of them. Um, Catherine, I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, self-care. So many people talk about it now, right? And it's, uh, is self-care guilt a thing? Because I suffer from that where I understand I have to do it and I get tips on how to do it. And I know, but then I start to feel guilty because my kids are on their tablets over here while I'm practicing this self-care I'm supposed to do. And it's just, you have to push through that, right? Is that an actual thing or is it just me? <laughs> I think it is, um, you know, I, I really do. And I'll, I will yield to the group here, but maybe some others have um, some better insight to that, but I definitely can relate to that, yes. Um, Tatum, I saw you shaking your head. Do you have, Tatum Kelly, do you have self-care guilt as well? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I don't have kids, but um, yes, because then I'm like, okay, if I take this time that I'm taking away from doing that for others, so, but you have to fit it in there. And, you know, I know a lot of these leaders that are here today, you know, you're working so many hours or working a lot and caring for others, but you really do have to take time for yourself. So I can't wait for my next pedicure. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> That's great. Um, Catherine, also, you know, in terms of mental health, um, social media, I mean, you talked about taking breaks, right, from the screens. Um, we know we just got to dive into that a little bit. I mean, you can't believe everything you see, right? I mean, you can't just let that get into your head and into your soul. And you walk around thinking that everything you're seeing on social media is reality. And that's how other, oh, look how everybody else is living and look at me. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, balancing that and practicing self-care by taking a break from all that? Exactly. I think, you know, my point of unplugging and that definitely should include social media I think, um, and this is my personal opinion, 
I'm certainly not an expert on the um, area of social media impact, but um, I totally agree that sometimes it can be, um, it can create more depression when you're seeing everybody so beautiful and happy and fun and um, I'm working, <laughs> you know, that kind of, um, that kind of um, impact it can have on you. I do think it's important. I think um, sometimes we, especially being isolated um, for people who are, you know, alone or, um, you know, have family or friends out of state, especially during the, the pandemic, the last, you know, two years, um, it's very important to reach out um, if you're able, like I said, safely and check in on them. Um, if I could, one of the things I wanted to put out for the group um, we're a contracted um, National Suicide Prevention Lifeline Contact Center, and they have a campaign this year. It's called Be the One Too, and I really like it. Mm -hmm. um, they talk about in this campaign is Be the One Too, and they have five action steps, and it's one, be the one to ask. Reach out and ask. Check on your neighbors. Check on your friends. Ask them in sin sincerely how, they, how are you. Are you okay? Are you fine, Nancy? <laughs> I really want to know. <laughs> um, be the be there. Be present. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to be present um, and keep them safe. If you have a friend or family that you know are having a tough time, um, it's important to be there and keep them safe. Also help them connect. And that's where 211 comes in. Um, get them connected to help or resources or counseling or financial assistance if they need it. That's, that's really, and we're 24 seven and they can call simply dial three digits, 211, or they can text us um, their zip code to 898, it's TXT 211. We have an online database that's just wonderful. Um, as well as email and chat. And also, I think the, the fifth um, action step is to follow up. If you are reaching out or helping someone, please follow up with them. Um, that's an important step as well. It really shows you care. Yeah. Yeah, all, all really good points, Catherine. And I think, you know, just in our own lives, you know, whether it's with a coworker, or our neighbors or, or people that we, you know, come across in our daily lives, maybe people we haven't been in touch with in a while and then we reconnect after the pandemic. Um, it's okay, it's okay to, to make that call. Um, and, and if you feel like many times we think, oh my gosh, this person could probably use a little more help than I can provide, right? Um, and you don't know how, you just don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. 211 can guide you through that. They can say, okay, well, maybe you can suggest this to this person, or you can, it could be a family member. I mean, these are really tough conversations to crack into with people, but 211 can help you sort of be your guide into how to do that and how to assess if, if further you know, help is needed, Catherine. We do want to bring in um, some graphics that we have to kind of recap um, everything that Catherine was just talking about. Um, you know, because it's so important. So there it is, that's how we help. Maybe you guys wanna take a little screen grab uh, with your phones. Um, we'll obviously have this for you later uh, available like in, in the chat where we can send it out to you, but um, you know, there it is. That's how we help um, the information and referrals that are available to our community. There's that list that, uh, of things that we can help you with, which is crisis support, suicide prevention, a national disaster distress helpline, um, there's all the different ways that you can reach us. And then this is so important um, to me because I've done a lot of work on this just as my, uh, my role as a journalist. I mean, you know, we, we talk about all the challenges that we can face through the pandemic or just regular times, whether it's, you know, you need assistance with, with paying our rent this month, or we need assistance getting our child into, into an after school program or child care. We need mental health assistance. Everyone's dealing with something now at a language barrier on top of that, right? Um, just imagine what that feels like. And that's something that I, I always talk about and I, and I always dive into because it's, it's my, it was my life when I was a kid. My parents did not speak English um, and, and they do now, but it's, you know, eh, eh, you know. <laughs> and uh, I'm first generation of my family in this country. And so I, I completely understand what it's like to face just normal everyday challenges with the added layer of a language barrier. 
and a cultural barrier too. So these uh, language translation services that we have at 211 are invaluable um, uh, because it really just broadens our reach, right, Catherine? I mean, can you just talk a little bit about that? And maybe Catherine, you can touch on how our community is changing and growing. I mean, I'm sure you're probably getting more calls, right, to 211 from people who prefer. Yes, um, and uh, on the translation services, we do offer 24-7 um, translation services for any language and the specialist stays on the line as well. So a lot of people aren't aware of that feature that we offer free to the, the caller. Um, yes, um, we've, as certainly during the pandemic, I mean, gosh, for the first six months, we saw an upwards of four to five times our normal contact volume, um, quite overwhelming. And um, the team was very creative in um, designing different ways and website links and bitlies and Day can tell you all more about that and her creativity, but we had to be very creative to get people directly to the resources available um, and quickly. So mm -hmm. especially um, in the you know last winter when the um, this past winter when the vaccines first came out, getting people to the vaccine sites and then also for the testing sites and um, and now for boosters. So um, it's been a daunting task for 211. Um, to main all, maintain all those resources, but to get people there. Yeah. So, you know, during, thank goodness during the holidays, we see somewhat of a decrease in our suicide prevention contacts, but we do see more, um, I wouldn't say an increase, but um, more support needed for crisis or people just trying to get through the holidays mm -hmm. and safely and, you know, with, um, with help. If anybody has any questions or comments, you know, please, you know, raise your hand or put them in the chat. You know, we really want this to be a conversation. So uh, feel free, you know, I'm trying to, you know, this is an open dialogue. So, uh, you know, chime in if you want to ask Catherine something before we wrap up, um, you know, or me, I will go get the t-shirt and put it on if that will motivate you guys to be, you know, more open about how, you know, we're not okay. Um, Catherine, I think one of the things I, that always stood out to me since I've, I've been here, part of the team at the Heart of Florida United Way, is how many people reached out to, through 211 uh, during the pandemic for the first time in their lives, people who had never, you know, needed these services or needed any kind of assistance before. Can you talk a little bit about, about that? Is all the new people? Sure. Um, yeah, in 2020, um, just to throw some numbers at you, we handled, um, and that's handled, not, not everything that came into us, but actually logged over 280,000 um, contacts for needs. And then our resource online database handled over 330,000. <clears> so between the two, um, you know, we helped over 500. Um, thousand, almost a half a million people in 2020. It's over amazing, really. <clears throat> so I think it's very important that people know um, that we are there and we're here to help and that um, please use us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely spread the word. Uh, looking at you, Laurel Biddy, because, uh, you know, <laughs> in your workplaces, if you have a platform on social media, you know, share, um, you know, what you learned today. I'm going to ask everybody to, uh, as we wrap up to, if you can turn on your cameras, because we want to get a little picture, a little screen grab here of everyone who participated today. Um, and I'm just really hoping that the next time we do this, it's in person because, uh, right, this virtual stuff. So, yep, I'm putting you all on the spot again so we can take a quick picture. Um, if everybody, we see a few more people, maybe you don't want to, maybe you're in your pajamas. That's okay. I told you this is a no judgment zone. No judgment zone. Um, but we're, if you want to, if you want to snap a quick picture too and just post it on, on social media with the hashtags that we're going to share with you here in just a moment. Um, again, this is, uh, we're just getting started. So here we go. Everybody smile. <laughs> Awesome. All right. And if you can just take a quick picture too, we'd love for you to spread the word. Um, and there it is in the chat, you know, all the, uh, 
the hashtags that we have and the, the handles that we have, Live United is, is really a hashtag that you're going to be seeing and hearing a lot about in the coming uh, year, next year, because it's sort of going to be, I think, the umbrella for everything we do. And speaking of everything we do and everything that we, uh, we have coming up, please take a look at your screen. Uh, Emerging Leaders is just getting started. We have a lot of activities coming up in the new year that are incredible opportunities for you to one, and most importantly, give back to your community, but two, network with other emerging leaders and make connections in our community, especially after we've been isolated right from each other for so long. So get your calendars out and take a look at your screen. January 22nd, you're gonna be hearing a lot about this coming up, it's our week of action. We're gonna have a week long event with various volunteer activities in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, the Emerging Leaders event um, will happen on the Saturday morning of that week. So you're gonna be hearing a lot more about that. Um, February 12th, Share the Love which is a wonderful event, um, a volunteer activity to help share the love to others within the community where we're gonna be making fleece blankets to distribute to our partner agencies in need. Uh, we're gonna be really spreading the word too as well in the new year in a whole new way and a whole new level about our partner agencies and everything Heart of Florida United Way does you know, to support these agencies and elevate them and, and broaden their reach in our community. And we can't do it without you though. We can't do it without our volunteers. So that's gonna be another wonderful event coming up. And then who doesn't love a happy hour? So March, 2022, uh, look for uh, a happy hour opportunity with emerging leaders. So that's a perfect example, this little graphic here of how emerging leaders is really all about giving back to your community, uh, being a community leader, right? Uh, getting on that path uh, to becoming a community leader and networking and meeting other like-minded people um, who want to be active participants and, and lift our, our region. Orlando is so good at that, right? We, we've done it before, but it doesn't always have to be in times of crisis. It doesn't always, it can be a year round thing where we are united and we're giving back and lifting each other up. And that's the goal of the Heart of Florida United Way is to keep it going all year long. Um, so I just want to thank Catherine. If, Catherine's still here, right? Thank you, Catherine, and your team uh, at 211 for everything you do every day. It's just an invaluable service uh, to our community. Um, I hope that you guys thank enjoy you. your- Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, I know it's a busy time of the year, so we appreciate all of you who joined us. Uh, Emerging Leaders, as I mentioned, gonna be hosting a lot of other events, so please look out for those that we just talked about and more. And then of course, last but not least, before we let you go, we have to select our winner. For today for being here we have this great prize the get up and go kayaking uh valued at 149 dollars for two guests to experience rainbow springs so we have a fun little wheel let's bring up the wheel so we can see who our winner is um all right let's go let's spin the wheel and see who gets to go kayaking at rainbow springs here we go here we go oh D. All right. D is the winner. Congratulations to D. You get to go kayaking. Post pictures. Hashtag live united and thank the heart of Florida United Way when you post all your pictures from your kayaking trip. <laughs> so congratulations. Um, thank you again to all of you for being here. Uh, once again, in the chat right there, you're going to see all of our, um, you know, our social media handles, where you can find us, where you can connect with us. Uh, send us messages, send us posts, we'll, we'll write you back, we'll, we'll get in touch. And of course, hashtag live united. Uh, even when you're out in your community and you know what, you're doing something that makes you feel good and makes you feel connected, post it, talk about it, share it and use that hashtag and tag us uh, because we're always looking to share stories of people that are giving back and connecting in our community. And then of course, emerging leaders hashtag uh, as well for this particular event. So help us spread the word, help us get new members. Uh, we are just getting started. This was a, a very small little intimate event just to touch on our mental health and check in with each other. But there is so much coming up in the next year. And we're gonna be doing a lot of way bigger things, hopefully in person and um, maybe in an event for our dogs because, because what are we without them, right? I think that's, the, that's what I'm walking away with. <laughs> so thank you very much to everyone who was here. Loved seeing your faces, even if it was just through a screen. Um, happy holidays. And like I said, keep in touch. All right. Hang on to those social media handles and hashtags. And we'll see you guys again soon, hopefully in one of our, our next events. Thank you again. <laughs>